right, we're going to speed through because we actually only have a few minutes. Um, email tips. Do not send email from your smartphone. Can anybody tell me why? Format? Yes. And what else? Mm. Yes? I personally don't like my as I said on my phone at the bottom. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Nice and loud. There's a lot of mistakes in the cash. Right. Exactly. And you tend to use um, R for A-R-E, oh, no. for Y-O-U. No. Uh, you tend to not capitalize I for I. And so that's it. So I, if you're sending an email, draft it in an MS word. If it's important, spell and grammar check it, then copy and paste it into your email. That's always the best way. Again, keep it formal, it could be forwarded. If it's a business email, file it somewhere. Make a file in your folder for networking context or something, but you'd be amazed how that stuff comes in handy. Okay, again, we spoke about this. Um, it identifies you as someone serious. I can't tell you how any of my students who have done business cards have you ever given one to someone and had them pleasantly surprised that that's what you did? Yes. Who's the that? Who's that back there? Yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you, John. Um, but I have had students come back and tell me that in an interview, they gave a business card and that, uh, didn't you? No, you didn't have to do a business card, you just didn't want to give it to me. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where you find out what people really do. <laughs> um, and also, it's a great way to get others cards. People are willing to give you a card if you're willing to give them a card. Um, again, you must follow up. Um, letters or cards, if your handwriting is terrible, um, you might want to type it on a sheet of paper and glue it into the card uh, if, if you're sending a handwritten card. Um, but I prefer letters, especially if it's an interview. Again, uh, when you're writing something formal, write it, set it aside, you read it, correct it, then send it. I read something very interesting this morning. Harry Truman, the president, uh, said that, um, especially if you're responding to something out of emotion, let it sit for 24 hours and then go back and look at it. See if you still feel the same way. Okay, verbal networking. What you say matters, yes. I heard that um, sending an actual postal note can be bad because by the time a, a, a hire gets the note, it's too late. It takes too much time. Um, it could be bad if you wait forever to send it. If you go home that night and you mail it and you put it in the mailbox the next morning, he has it a day later. Okay. So um, that works. Yeah. I happen to be partial to that because people get so many emails, they don't read them. Did you ever send both an email and a You could do both. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is a different question. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Where do you meet people? Okay. Um, where don't you meet people is more the question. It, you meet them at formal networking events. How many of you are going to the Business Forum breakfast on March 28th? You're going to meet people there. Okay, you're gonna meet people from banks and from local businesses. Um, sometimes you will go to dinners on behalf of, do you guys ever get to go to dinners and get invited to formal dinners? Sometimes even at weddings, don't go and at, at, at the beach. I'm really serious. You don't go online at the bank, online at the supermarket. And in the, I made a client once in the laundromat. You never know where you're going to meet people. But very, very often when you're invited to formal business events, like a lot of the events that you do here, when you have a speaker, the speaker should be coming with cards. But if not, you should have your cards with you. I do have a bunch of cards with me here. Yes. I mean, another thing where you, or another place where you can meet people is social media. I think a lot of people meet on Twitter nowadays. You post a tweet and you never know who's going to read it. It no. might be a client. It might be somebody who's interested in hiring you. So watch you out for those things. You can meet people yeah. on social media, but again, you have to clean that social media up and be very careful about what your tweets are. Yes. Oh, the client that you met the laundry. <laughs> it's a very clean client, I can tell you that. Um, actually, it was back when I first started doing um, my business. I started as an image consultant. 
so I was working with people on their colors and dressing properly, because I am a certified coach. Well, I was. I, I haven't kept up my certification, because I've moved on to do other things. But I work with people on their best colors, the best styles for their body types, and, and the best ways to dress formally for business. Yes, it was. She happened to be an executive of Channel 13. So, yeah. You never know when you wash your clothes, right? Um, <laughs> Be very, very careful what you say during conversations. Um, elevator speech. Now, I really wanted to practice this, um, but it doesn't look like we're going to have time. But I want all of you to work on an elevator speech. Because if I see when I remember that you were here, and I have a really good memory, I'm going to walk up to you, and I'm just going to say, tell me about yourself. And you're going to be able to deliver to me in 30 seconds something about yourself that tells me your name, the three most important things that I need to know about you as a potential employer. And where you are in your life right now. For instance, who haven't I got here? Mindy, I'm gonna use you as an example. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the talking. I'm not gonna, Mindy's like, no! <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mindy. How are you? My name is Denise Miller, and currently I teach at Queens College, and I've had a, a program that meant to students to get them ready for internships. Uh, I got to do this work because I have been in the corporate workplace for 40 years. Yes, count them, 40. Um, 40 years. 22 of those years as an entrepreneur, and then another, uh, I'm sorry, 22 of those years as a corporate person, and then another, uh, another 18 years as an entrepreneur, and I've had the opportunity to work with management at all levels. When I was in corporate, I was actually a director of a, of a unit for National Grid. And as an entrepreneur, I've done soft skills training, image consulting, and uh, I've written a workbook on it. That was probably about 40 seconds. I didn't ask anybody to time me. But I'm able to do that. It's not always going to come out the same way, but you'll always have the same options. OK? All right. Voicemail greeting. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> you need to know what to do. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hello, this is Justin. Thanks so much for calling. I'm not available to take your call right now, but please leave your name and number and the best time for me to return your call, and I will call you back as quickly as possible. Do not say, I will call you back at my convenience. When I hear that on a voicemail, I'm like, at your convenience? That really makes me angry, because that's very self-serving. You always want to be service-minded. If you develop a service-minded mindset, that will help you tremendously. So please, if any of you have at my convenience on your voicemail, not that I'll ever call it to hear, but wipe it out and say as soon as possible. Now it may be at your convenience because you're not in the mood to talk to anybody, but you don't need to tell them that. That's a little insulting, I think, to your call. When you leave a voicemail, does it make sense? Be prepared if you call somebody. Well, what am I going to say if I need to leave them? I left a, a horrible voicemail to Eric Rizzo this morning. I, I said, hi, Eric. It's I haven't talked to you in a while, and uh, 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 I really wasn't prepared. Um, now, there are ways that you can diddle around with voicemail systems to make it erase and re-record, but I just didn't have time for that. So I just left him a voicemail message this morning, and I sounded like a blizzard in the uh, But sometimes that happens. Try not to make it happen. Think about what you're going to say if you need to leave a voicemail message. Um, always look directly at people. If you, gotta make, if you have to make small talk, the best thing is to ask them questions about themselves and about their career. Most people love to talk about themselves, so if you just ask a few well-placed well questions, they'll be able to continue. Again, smile, smile, smile. Um, when you use a business card, um, There are enough here. Are you going to hold that? And I'm going to hold this. Just take one and pass them around. If you already have one, please go uh, take another one. Um, what you're going to do here, let's stand up here so we're not so When you hand somebody a business card, you're always going to hand it to them 
facing them so they can actually look at it as you give it to them. So, so you're going to hand me this card, make make believe it's yours, and I'm going to hand you mine. And then when you take it, see what you just did? You did it instinctively. Very good. Take the card and look at it. If there's something really interesting on the card, comment on it. Whatever it is. Like you might say, oh, new professionals program, what's that? Uh, or whatever. Or some, sometimes somebody has an interesting name. I'm big on asking people what their names mean because I just think it's amazing what people's names mean. Um, and uh, maybe it's something about their organization. You want to you want to take time to study it. Um, especially when you're dealing with many Asian cultures, they consider it an insult if you take it and you just stick it in your pocket without even looking at it. And in the United States, because we're so quick about everything, we tend to do that, and people find it insulting. Have a seat. Okay. So now, any extra cards left? Still going around. Oh, it's still going around. Okay. Um, virtual networking. We've already talked a lot about this. We're going to run through it really quickly. Again. Um, if it's too racy for Brandon to see, it shouldn't be on your social media. <laughs> okay. Um, you can talk about um, any, everybody. Anybody here have a cute portfolio page? Thank you. Again, uh, new professionals, you all will be having one. All of you should have one. The great thing about cute portfolio is that when you leave the school, you can still keep the page. And so it's a great, great, great tool. Um, there are cards if you want to stop in room one of Honors Hall. Uh, there are cards, or you can actually um, search YouTube. If you search YouTube for Q Portfolio, there are a whole series of videos. Um, it's a personal web page. And the Center for Teaching and Learning does that. Um, last thing, Harvey McKay. He's the one who wrote How to Swim with the Sharks. But he's also written a great book about networking. And 